Wellington, so I went over there in 2015, and that was kind of my go-to person to set up all my audiovisual stuff along with a gazillion other things that he did at Wellington. He would poke his head around the corner about seven in the morning and scare me almost every day. What do you do today, Mr. Christensen? So he graduated in 2016 from Wellington. He's going to talk about that experience. Uh, but after he graduated, he's been going around to uh, different schools, and he, and he came to some of our grade 9 and 12 classes before the Christmas break. And then um, he's going to speak to all our grade 8s today. He's going to kind of talk about his experience, and he's got a, a really good message. So he's going to go through his presentation for probably 15 or 20 minutes. And then towards the end, uh, you have an opportunity for questions. So if you do have questions at the end, I will come around with a microphone so that I can hear you properly. So you'll put your hand up, and I'll come around with this microphone, and you can ask any questions you might have. So as things are going on, uh, just kind of make note of something you might want to ask Matt towards the end of the presentation. Okay, I'll also just remind everyone, a lot of energy in the room, that's great, you guys are from VIU, but we've got a guest here at Dover, so let's make sure that we're treating our guests with respect, paying attention, make sure your phones are off, and without further ado, I'd like everybody to give a warm welcome for Matt Krause. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. I can't hear you. Are you guys doing good? I want to hear it. Yes, that's more like it. Like, so like Mr. Christensen has said it, my name is Matthew Crassel. Um, I am I'm a person with autism, and I'm here today to present what I call my autistic life. Um, but before I really uh, share with you guys the start of my life, I always like to give you guys a definition of what autism is, because not everybody knows the word autism. So the main definition of it is autism is a treatable neurological spectrum disorder. It affects between one to 150 children, youth, and adults in BC alone. Most people that have autism see things differently than other people, and that's one reason why I got diagnosed with autism. And also, some people that have autism may have problems learning different subjects anywhere, and that's the second reason why I got diagnosed. So there's several different definitions, but those first three are the, basically the main definitions for autism. So the beginning of my life, there's me there. I was born on May 7th, 1998, and that was me as a newborn. I was just born. That, that picture was probably taken probably 15 minutes after once I was born. Preschool, I went to a special school um, called the Child Development Center. And that's the building there. It's here in Nanaimo. And lots of people that have autism actually go to that school when they're in preschool. And actually, it was a really good school. I met, it was the first place I've ever made new friends. And I was there for two years. And after my second year, I was upset because it's hard to change and go somewhere else and start a new chapter. And I'm going to talk a lot about that later on today, too. So when I moved on to elementary school, I went to Uplands Park Elementary School. It's a really good elementary school, as a matter of fact. And I was there all the way from kindergarten to grade seven. But there is a lot of moments that's happened in elementary school. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now, starting in grade one. So in, in, since the beginning of grade one, I had a lot of learning problems, as well as behavior issues, especially during recess. Now. I know pretty much all of you guys have always seen lots of crazy stuff going on at recess that causes, makes, gets people causing trouble, right? It happens all the time and it's unbelievable. It doesn't just happen in elementary school, it even happens like in this school sometimes where you, people could be bullying and, and fighting and that's not acceptable in any school or any place. And grade four was actually the worst year for me because I used to be a bully. And back then, I was bullying all the time. And it was the worst school year because I got into a lot of trouble from the school principal for many different things. And the main reason was because of me bullying. And almost every day or two days, people would see me in the principal's office just for that reason. And I just didn't know how to learn my lessons. But when I was going through grades five to seven, my behavior did start to improve a bit. But it's not 100%, but it, I was getting there. So now in high school, I, unfortunately I did not come to the school for my high school years, but I definitely enjoyed looking around this building last month. 
like Mr. Christensen has said it when I was presenting from the other grades, from grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, I was able to look around the whole school, and it's an interesting school, but I went to Wellington Secondary School, home of the Wildcats. And yes, uh, that was when I met Mr. Christensen, not in the beginning of my actual high school years, but near the ends of it. And Mr. Christensen has also have seen some interesting moments too that happened in grade 12, which I will mention a little bit later. But I'm gonna start in grade eight. So for when I was you guys' age, of course it was very different for me to start high school. What, what about you guys? Was it, did it feel different on the first day you came to this school? Did it? Yeah, it, it, it always happens. And also, you, two weeks into my first year of high school, I made lots of new friends. And I also started to love going to school. Because if you think about this, every school year, not just starting this school year, but continuing on when you go to grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, you're going to meet approximately two times more new students than you would back when you were in elementary school. It's a true story. It's happened to me every single school year throughout my grades eight to 12 year. I've always meet two times more because people could be transferring from to another school or there'll be people coming from out of town that moved to Nanaimo and they had to find a certain school. It happens every year and you'll, you'll experience that difference in the next four years. So I'm gonna jump to grade 11 mainly because grades nine and 10 were the same as in grade eight. So in grade 11, there was a biggest moment in my grade 11 year, which what I did was on my own, I decided to ch change my life completely. Now, are you guys really curious to know how I changed my life? Are you ready to hear a story? Yeah. I've got a really good story. Now, have you ever guys had a moment in your life where you would fall, try to fall asleep and you couldn't fall asleep because all of a sudden, in your brain, you think about something that you remember from the past, which you wish you'd forgotten to do. Has that happened? It happens to everybody. And it happened one time, around February, my grade 11 year. I couldn't fall asleep because I was remembering the times when I used to be bullying back 10 years ago in grade four. And I just didn't know how, how I was able to change that because there's, there were still friends out there in high, that was in high school of me that still wasn't interested in seeing me because of what I used to do the, many years ago. So I was thinking to myself, how am I gonna change that? So what ha how, the, how I fell asleep from it was I made my this biggest choice, which was when I go to school tomorrow in the morning, I'm gonna go around to everybody and I would apologize for what I've done many years ago. And then when that happened, once my life changed completely the next day, all my friends in high school started to become such amazing friends to me. And they knew I was emotional because I felt emotional. I was, I was crying too, so they knew I was being serious. They knew I wasn't joking because I wasn't joking. And it was a huge difference. And, and this is what it's like now. If I was visiting a school, visiting them, they know that I'm a great person now. Okay, now in grade 12, my final year of high school, of course, is very emotional for me for several reasons. Of course, because I, I enjoyed high school and that was the time where I met Mr. Christensen. And by the way, he's a great vice principal. I'll tell you that right now. He's a great vice principal. I <laughs> you deserve it, I'll tell you that. Uh, so anyways, uh, there was a lot of interesting things I enjoyed doing. And then in the 2016 high school award ceremony, I received something called a school spirit award. Now, when I was here last month, I heard that you guys have a school spirit award in the school. Is that correct? Well, that's great because the students would definitely deserve it if they really know what they're doing in the school and how they can be a good leader to the school because everybody can be a leader to the school. It doesn't have to be a just grades 9, 10, 11, 12 students. It can be you if, if you know what you're doing. So, and it happened to me throughout grade 11 and 12, and all of a sudden, surprise, surprise, I got a school spirit award. Now, there's going to be a double step to this that I'm going to also talk about 
in a couple minutes. Now, that picture there on the left was me when I was in grade eight, and here I am in grade 12. I just like to share, I like to share that difference because mainly because I, in the yearbooks, you guys can't see my yearbooks. So in the presentation, why not? Now this card here, this was actually from an elementary school here in Nanaimo, from Rock City Elementary School. I surprisingly got this card. Um, back in April, two year, three years ago now, I was presenting at Rock City School for an Autism Awareness Assembly. I was asked to do it, and I was still in grade 12, so I had to skip two classes because of it. And I just went down and I presented my autistic life. And just two months later, it was June, just the month when I was graduating from Wellington, I was going to a special private banquet for, for graduation of 2016. And one of the educational assistants at Rock City actually was going to their, that banquet, and she knew I was coming. So she actually brought a huge envelope to the banquet. And she decided to surprise me at the banquet with a big card. And on the front, it said 2016 and some other quotes. I couldn't remember what they were. Then when I opened the card, that's what that is. So it's all the students and the staff. They wrote their names on the card to congratulate me on my, on my graduation. And I cried because it was the best card I ever got from graduation. It's so emotional, and I'm, that's, that's the only card I remember keeping from my grad. It's the only card, because it really means a lot to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you the double step of winning a school spirit is, I call this the big step. And the reason I call it a big step is, here I am there, this is at my graduation ceremony at the Port Theater. And that gentleman there, his name is Mr. Mason. Um, he used to be a vice principal at Wellington Secondary School with Mr. Mr. Christensen at the time. And he was just retiring at the time. So because Mr. Mason was working over at Wellington from 1990 to 2016, the staff wanted to award, to give this, a special treat to Mr. Mason from having his own award, just to show how much he did to Wellington back several, well, 25 years. And they also wanted to award a student that did that same thing. And this is a double step towards school spirit. So if you, if you did, had a lot of leadership and commitment to the school and community, you would win this award, award which is called the Tom Mason Wildcat Award. Now this is the award here, it's close up. This is actually hung in the school hallway at Wellington Secondary School and it's gonna be there for the rest of everyone's life. Now I'm gonna be sharing a video of how I, you guys can be able to see when I won that award because it was an emotional footage and it was the best footage I've ever had in my grad ceremony video. Now I'm gonna share that right now here so just give me a few minutes. Which leads me to our final award here today. This is a new award presented for the first time, excuse me, in 2016. This award goes to a student who, much like Mr. Mason, represented the spirit of Wellington and what it takes to be a wildcat. We are awarding a graduate who has succeeded in a number of ways in the classroom, showed tremendous growth, leadership, school, and community spirit. The recipient for 2016 has displayed tremendous pride in Wellington, volunteered whenever asked, not for what not asked, was welcoming and engaging to all of the students, no attention to age, grade, or social group. The student gave countless hours to all activities at the school, large and small, and until today seemed happy with only a school t shirt for thank you. The plaque to this award. There it is there. Is Awarded to a Wellington graduate for outstanding service, leadership, and commitment to school and community. And we are very proud of calling it the Tom Mason Wildcat Award. Right, be ready for the big moment.
this. <laughs> the recipient of the 2016 and inaugural Tom Mason Wildcat Award is Matthew Fast. <laughs> What did you guys think of that? I know it's, it's surprising, right? It was definitely an emotional moment, um, something I'm never going to forget. Um, and I've, in every single presentation I do in schools, I always share that video because it's, it's mind blowing. And my parents never knew anything about this. I didn't know about this. It was a huge surprise. And Mr. Christensen was there, so he knew what was going on. But he just liked to keep secrets. I think that's what it was. Um, so once I graduated from high school, I definitely felt disappointed to leave all my friends that I've known for such a long time. And that's the reason why I feel emotional all the time, is I don't know where all my friends that graduated with me are going to go next. And that's going to be the same thing with you guys once you graduate. Everyone's going to split, split up. Some people will go to university, some will just stick with work. You know, there's, there's several different th things that you can do after graduation. And what I did was one month after high school, I started working at a place here in Nanaimo called Lowe's. How, hands up if you guys have been to Lowe's before. I like this, it's a big, lots of hands, that's awesome. You can put your hands down now, thank you. It's a really good store and I'm a loader, so with my strong arms, I load lots of heavy things to the people's vehicles, and I'm actually pretty good at it. I call myself the king of the loaders, because I've been there for three years. So it's really a, a good success. Now, before I finish, there's one question I want you guys all to think about for the next little while and throughout your years of high school, because it, it's going to take you time to answer this, because there's more than one answer, which is, how can you show your school spirit to this school? How can you do it? There's tons of reasons. So start thinking about that throughout your years of high school for the next four years. And if you think of an answer before you graduate, there might be a chance you might win a school spirit award in the future. You never know. There's tons of different ways, but I don't want to cheat and give you any answers. So it's, some, it's something you really need to start thinking through your brain for the next couple of years. Okay, so we're gonna get into the questionnaire period now. So Mr. Christensen has a microphone around, so if anyone has a question, um, feel free to raise your hand, and anyone else, anyone has a question? Any questions? I have a question, Matt. What are you thinking with that mustache and that guy's <laughs> I'm joking. I used to grow facial hair, actually. Yeah, yeah. But the reason why I shaved it is mainly because ladies will randomly come up to me and, and, and they'll tell me this one thing. You need to shave because you look like you're a homeless person. I'm not kidding. So I was like, okay, okay, I won't grow the beard. So. <laughs> yeah, anyone, don't be shy. Are you sure? I think one thing that we can all agree upon is I'm not sure how many people got in front of about 120 or 30 students, but or even anywhere, and had to do a presentation. And that's one thing that uh, Matt, uh, this I think probably we were talking earlier, probably the second biggest group he's done. He did all of Rock City School lunch with about 400 students, but this is the biggest group at high school he's ever presented to. Um, so uh, it takes some guts to do it. Matt does it because he he really wants to. Uh, help you guys along the way in high school without messing around that school spirit and getting involved. So. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um. <laughs> uh, last call, anyone that has any questions? Any questions for Matt? Is that a yes? It looks like it.
when did I get diagnosed with autism? I was two and a half years old, so it was just one month before I turned three. And I, it's funny I remember it because, thanks to my parents, and I was actually in a newspaper about it back in 2001, about my time when I got diagnosed with autism during Autism Awareness Month. And yeah, I was almost three. And it was it's surprising it was that long ago, but people can get diagnosed at different ages. They don't have, it can be two and a half. Some people get diagnosed at age. Sometimes people are older and they get diagnosed. It's hard to say, it's, it's a rare moment when things happen like that. So yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, sure. Have you ever dyed your hair? Have I dyed my hair? No, I haven't. <laughs> but when I was in grade eight though, I almost tried to go bald and I cut my own hair and that was the only crazy thing I did. But it was, it was not good. But one day though, I'm gonna go bald, but we'll see. Nothing wrong with that. Oh. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, there's one, one back way back here. there. Yeah. I was going to say that I signed a card too. I was born in the city, so yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you, growing up, were you like ever around kids that have autism as well? Like, did you get to be around other people? Yes. Uh, I actually was in a Skills for Life class, which is definitely a class where people with autism would go to. Um, I was in a Skills for Life class from grade one and half of grade two. And yeah, there was a lot of people that were disabled. Even someone on a wheelchair, as a matter of fact, was in the class back in elementary school. And I peer tutored at Skills for Life class in grade 11. So I definitely worked around with people with autism many times for several, several years. Is there anybody else that was at that Rock City? The first one, Rock City presentation, any other? Well, or no, what is it, Rock City? Uh, Wellington, Rock City. Oh, so I don't know, probably not, I don't think so. Either. 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 Anyone else? So if there's no more questions. Uh, there's one more thing first. Oh. Slow your horses. Uh, I have a website which is www.mmcrastle.wix.com forward slash my site. I have presentation videos as well as other special things. And I have free business cards. So what I'm going to do is Mr. Christensen has a box of cards, and I could get uh, one more uh, teacher to help me out here. And yeah, that wraps it up. So how about a big round of applause before we head out? Thank you. So Matt was here before the uh, winter break. We made him a uh, honorary dolphin. So we have some Dover Bay athletic shirt. I saw it on Instagram a couple days ago. Yep. So we'll slowly Get him from the Wildcat to be an adult because he's been oh. here a lot. So thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Thank you guys for being good on you. We, I was working with this Jane before Christmas and we thought that this day, uh, this is Matt Craskell, and Matt was going to come and present to you guys before the Christmas break, and then we thought that this would be a good day to do it. So he just presented the half of the grade eights, um, and I was presented to the other half of the grade eights. So I first met Matt back in 2015. I was the vice principal over at Wellington, and I actually got over to the council and got Wellington as a vice principal. And Matt was in grade 12. Uh, he was kind of my, I got there, he was my go-to guy. He would do pretty much anything I asked him to do, especially around the sound equipment and setting up for assemblies and those type of things. I'd often get to work at like 10 after 7, and Matt would be there five minutes before I would be just seeing what he could get done for me. Um, after graduation, Matt started in a little bit before, started doing some presentations. So he wants to, uh, he's going around to different schools in Denial and doing uh, his presentation. He did some grade 9 to 12 classes here before the winter break. And now he's coming to present it to our grade 8. So kind of our last group here at Dover that he's presenting to. Um, towards the end, Matt's going to have a, like a question and answer section. And uh, if you have a question, I'll bring this microphone. He's got his own mic so that he can hear you. So as the presentation is going on, if anything pops in your mind around a question, just hold it toward the end, and then Matt will ask if you have questions. And this presentation is about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so with no further ado, please welcome Matt Crosby. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Bigger group. Like, Better than last group. Yeah, because I'll tell you one thing. The smaller group, they didn't like to be like energetic, and I'm glad you guys are energetic today, and that's good. 
Um, but yeah, like Mr. Christian has said it, my name is Matthew Crassel. I am a person with autism, and I'm here today to share with you guys my presentation I made on my own called My Autistic Life. But before I begin sharing with you guys the start of my life, I want to give you guys three definitions of what autism is. So the main definition of it is autism is a treatable neurological spectrum disorder that affects between one to 150 children, youth, and adults in BC alone. And most people that have autism see things differently than other people. That's one reason why I got diagnosed with autism. And some people that have autism may have problems learning different subjects anywhere. And that's my second reason why I got diagnosed with autism. There's, those are the three main definitions of what autism is from that, just that one word, autism. So the beginning of my life, there I am as a newborn, basically 15 minutes once I was just starting life. I was born on May 7th of 1998, and I'm going to be turning 21 this year. It's hard to believe that. But yeah, I just like to share that picture because that, that was the best picture of me when I was just starting my life. So when I was in preschool, I went to a, a building called the Child Development Center. And it's a really, and that's a building there in that picture. And I was there for two years in preschool. And it's a really good preschool. And also, lots of people that have autism, especially would go to that preschool because it's easy to connect with friends. And I definitely had a great connection with friends for the first two years I was there. And that was the very first place I ever made new friends. And, there was, and there's also a moment, too, I just, I just remember, too, that there's when you hear about special public events going on in Nanaimo, there's a lot of fundraisers here in this city that raise money for the Child Development Center just because they have people with special needs that go there. And just tons of things that go around with the building that they just need a lot of support for. And Nanaimo here, they really support that building. And that's what really makes me thrilled. So when I went to elementary school, I went to Uplands Park Elementary School here in Nanaimo. It's a really good school. I was there from kindergarten to grade seven. And there was a lot of interesting moments that were going on, both good and bad. And I'm gonna start with sharing those moments starting when I was in the first grade. So starting in grade one, I had a lot of learning problems as well as behavior issues, especially during recess. Now, you'll easily remember that almost every, almost every day at recess, in every single school, you'll see crazy moments where students will be fighting and doing things that are unacceptable at recess. You see that all the time, right? It happens all the time, not just in elementary schools, but it happens in secondary level too. And there's gotta be ways where we can stop it, but it's a challenge. But when I was in grade four, it was the worst school year for me, mainly because I got into a lot of trouble from the school principal for lots of different things. And the main reason to that is I used to be a bully. I used to bully a lot of people back in that time, just over 10 years ago now. And I just didn't know how to, change, to learn my lessons, even though I've been to the principal almost every single day in the office. I know it's embarrassing, right? It was embarrassing. Um, but once I got to grades five through seven, it did start to improve. But unfortunately, it wasn't 100%. But I was getting there. So when I went to high school, unfortunately, I did not come to this school, Dover Secondary School. But when I was here last month, when I was presenting for the grades nine through 12 uh, grade levels, I actually was walking around this whole school just to see what it looked like. And it's an interesting school and just massive, a massive school. Um, but unfortunately, yes, it, once again, I did not come here. I went to Wellington Secondary School, home of the Wildcats. I still, it's hard for me now to support an actual sports team now, mainly because I've been here looking around. Uh, but Wellington Secondary School was a good school and I have memories too I want to share right now. Starting when I was you guys' age in grade eight, so the first day of high school, of course, is very different for me. Now, you guys have all realized high school is so different because you meet lots of new friends and all that. But think about this. 
two weeks into my first year of high school, I made lots of new friends and I also started to love going to school. Because you think of something right now, every single school year when you start high school, not just in this grade, but like you met lots of new friends here in the school once you started, right? Yeah, of course. But if you think about this, when you start grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, for the next four years, you're going to get that same thing again. You're going to meet another two times more, mainly because there will be students that will transfer from another high school to this school. Or, and also, you would get some, you, there's be times every single year where students will move from another town or city or even another province here to Nanaimo and they would come here. And they need to make new friends too. So that's another reason why you would meet another two times because it happens every single year. Everybody moves around. Everything happens like that. So I'm going to jump to grade 11 mainly because grades 9 and 10 were the same as when I was in grade 8. Now I'm going to share with you guys a moment where I did something on my own to change my life completely. Now, are you guys ready for, to, for me to tell you a story? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Awesome. Now, before I really start, I have one question I want to ask. Have you ever guys had a moment in your life where you try to fall asleep, like lying down in your bed trying to fall asleep, and you just couldn't because you think about all these things that's happened to you from the past that you wish you'd forgotten? Has that happened to everybody? Yeah, it, it happens to everybody. Believe me, it does happen. And this is what happened. When I was trying to fall asleep one time back in February when I was in grade 11, I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't mainly because what was coming through my brain was I was trying to remember all the things that I was doing back when I was a bully in grade four. That was coming into my brain. And I just, didn't, I just couldn't find out how to get that away. But there was one thing I, I decided to do, which made it go away, and I fell asleep, which is, the next morning, I would go to my school and apologize to everybody I'd, that I've been crazy to and bullied and all that, all the disrespectful behavior. I just went around, and I felt emotional. I was in tears, and I apologized. And they knew I was serious because of how I was feeling, and I was not joking. And then once my life changed completely from that, all of my friends in high school just started to become amazing friends to me, and they still are to this day, just because I changed my life. And then throughout grade 12, it's, it, it was still continuing that same thing. And of course, my final year of high school is very emotional, and it was emotional, and it still is to me to this day, because I don't know where everyone is going, and my, in my grad class, because everyone can split up after they graduate. And one moment as well is during the 2016 high school award ceremony, I received something called a school spirit award. Now, I have heard from this school that you guys have a school spirit award that this school gives out every single award ceremony, which is a good thing, because if you get it, you would deserve it. And I'm gonna talk a lot about school spirit a little bit later, and it's gonna be a double step to that in a short little bit. So here I am in grade eight, where you see my little red, little directing. And also, right here is me in grade 12. And I just like to share that difference because I know you guys never see my yearbooks, but I just like to share that just for fun because I just like to share all the moments from my picture differences, and there's not a huge difference, except the little facial hair. Okay, so this card here I got from Rock City Elementary School. So now, two months before I graduated, I went to Rock City School and I presented about autism to the school, and actually we have a, a peer tutor here who actually was there um, the, one of the peer tutors for one of the grade eight classes who was here was at the school and he, when he was in grade seven and he saw me present and actually his name is on there too. And this was actually from every single student at Rock City Elementary School, including the staff and the principal and the, 
the principal there at the time, he's now a principal out connected, and Mr. Young. He was such a great principal. And this card, I'm never gonna throw away. I'm never gonna throw away that card. It was the best graduation card I ever got. And how I got that card was actually from one of the educational assistants that used to be at Rock City. She knew I was coming to this private banquet that I was going to, and she was going too. It was a private youth banquet I was at. So at the banquet, she gave me this card in a big envelope. So I'm thinking, oh no, what is this? What is this card gonna be? So I thought it was a, a, like a big trip or $5,000. That was my two uh, predictions. But no, I opened the card and it said 2016 with some special grad quotes, which I don't remember somehow. And then when I opened it, that's what that was. It said congratulations and it's from every single student. They wrote their names down and the staff. It was such a good moment. And I hope you, Owen, remember that, do you? Yeah, Owen was in grade seven at the time and he wrote in that card, so something I really like to share. Okay, now I'm gonna take you to the double step towards school spirit, which I call the big step. And I call it the big step for a good reason. Now, here I am there, and that's me when I was just about to graduate from high school, it was my graduation ceremony. And this gentleman here, his name is Mr. Mason. He used to be a vice principal at Wellington Secondary School, and he was actually involved with Wellington Secondary School for just over 25 years. And because of him, he was just retiring too at that time. So the staff, and Mr. Christensen was there at the time. He was, they actually decided to surprise Mr. Mason for his retirement, which was to have his own award right here on, the, on a plaque called the Tom Mason Wildcat Award. And I think that's an incredible idea. So they also wanted to award a student that did the same type of thing as what Mr. Mason did, was showing school spirit, leadership, and huge commitments to the school and community. And I was the first student that won that. And I'm gonna share with you guys a close up. So here it is, Matthew Crassel, 2015-16. And this is in the school hallway at Wellington. So if you ever go into Wellington, you'll see that on a wood plaque somewhere in the hallway. Now I'm gonna share with you guys a video on sharing with you guys the moment of when I got that award because it was an emotional moment and it's something I always like to share. So I'm just gonna just give me one moment and you'll be able to see the video. Which leads me to a final award for today. This is a new award presented for the first time. Ready for the big moment?
What did you guys think of that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. It was definitely surprising because not just the applause, but more importantly, the standing ovation in the video that you saw was what really surprised me. And I only saw that first front row, but I didn't see way over there, but everyone stood up. And when I sat down, you didn't see it, but I cried just after. And Mr. Christensen was there. So he saw everything from, from that moment. And yeah, I was, I was upset because, not, mainly because I just felt disappointed just leaving all my awesome friends I've known for a very long time, at least five years. And because like I said earlier, everybody splits up after they graduate. Some people will go to university. Some people would go to just sticking with working full time. There's, different, there's several different options you're going to learn more about once you get closer to grade 12. Now, what I did after I graduated, one month after high school, was I started working at a place called Lowe's. Now, raise your hand if you have been to Lowe's before. Great. I'm seeing lots of hands. This is great. Okay, you put your hands down now. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a really good store. I really enjoy going around there, just working there. And I'm basically a loader. That's my position. I load lots of heavy things into people's vehicles, my strong arm muscles and everything like that. And I call myself the king of the loaders because I've been there for three years and the rest of the loaders have only been there for about seven, eight months. So that's something I like to share too. Now, before I finish and we get, before we get into the questionnaire period, I want you guys to think about this one question I'm gonna ask you. And you know, I want you to start thinking about it for the next little, throughout your next couple of years of high school, which is, how can you show your school spirit to this school? How can you do it? There's tons and tons of answers to this. That's the reason why it takes a couple of years to answer that. But you might be able to know it sooner, which is great, but it, it can take you time to think about it. Because if you really think of an answer before you graduate, there might be a chance that you might win a school spirit award. And if you do, you would deserve it. Because you knew from my answer and from my advice, and that'd be something I'd be really, really proud about. So now we're gonna get into the questionnaire period now. Uh, so Mr. Christensen has the mic there, so anyone that has a question, feel free to raise your hand. At least we have one in the front row. Uh, how old were you when you were diagnosed on I was two and a half years old. Uh, it was just actually one month before I turned three. That was when I got diagnosed with autism. And I actually remember that 100% because I was in a newspaper article about it. It was right around October of 2001, which was when Autism Awareness Month used to be. But it's in April now. But back when I was just diagnosed, it used to be in October. So, yeah, we got someone back there. You don't sound like, you don't look like someone could be a bully. Yeah, but guess what? Everybody didn't see things different than that. And I, but if you saw me 10 years ago, I was really messing around. But I really had to learn a lot of lessons. To, in order to, to not be a bully. But I made fun of a lot of people. Lots and lots of people. I, that was another main part of when I was bullying people. I just made fun of people, calling people names. And it, you know that stuff is unacceptable. So that's another thing too. Well, when I was just starting elementary school, I wasn't bullied back in elementary school about just being autistic. But when I was starting elementary school for the first time, and when I was starting, actually when I was starting grade one, I was actually quite embarrassed because everyone else that was in my class just wasn't, didn't have autism at all. So I wasn't sure if it was just me with a serious illness, but I, like, years and years later, I met more and more people that had that same type of disability as me. So there, it happened, like, that type of thing happens all the time. And it, it's always unexpected until you actually meet that person. If that makes sense. Anyone else? We have a, someone in the front row. How did they discover you in autism? 
how they describe me with autism, how they discover. Uh, well, I had lots of learning issues, tons and tons. Actually, even years and years ago, after school, for, from grade one all the way to grade 10, I think it was, um, there would be a special educational assistant that would come to my house and um, not just help me with homework, but I remember when I was little, I was going through um, lots of special uh, programs. And one of the main things I definitely remember was learning about something called idioms, which is basically when someone tells you expression words that, that express into something into an actual sentence. Like the main one I remember was, um, and, and here's, a, here's a sample of an idiom. How would you, what would it feel like if you had elbow grease? Doing too much work. That's, that's the main idiom for that. So I learned lots of idioms like that in my programs too that I was doing. And because of my disabilities like that, I used to be terrible at them because I didn't understand idioms. And I used to never knew what elbow grease idiom was. That was the worst one I would always get wrong. Uh, we have this gentleman here. What was the lowest point of your life? The lowest point? The lowest point of my life. Like, can you kind of explain it a little? Like, what was the part in your life that you like, were super sad? What really makes me sad? I actually remember just, re actually it wasn't too long ago, just a couple of years ago, I, w I was bullied just from people that were just above your, you guys' age. I have been bullied, not in a school, but it was out and about near a mall. There's been, there's been a few times where I've been bullied, not just because of my disabilities, but just, I think it was the way I looked. I couldn't remember 100%, but I've been bullied not just when I was little, but I've been bullied at this age, at the age of 19 and 20. And I, I just didn't know how to do it. There was no one that would have been a lifesaver for me to like say, hey, you need to stop bullying this person, get out. Because that's what people should be like. They, sh they should try not to agree on what bullies talk about, but making fun of people. Any other questions? You had another question. Right, Is there? Down up here in the front row. Uh, how does autism affect you in like, daily life? In daily life? Yeah. Actually, there's another example I can share. Is when I sometimes was involved in, in like some sports activities. Uh, there was, there's been numerous times. I've been in sports groups before. I used to be in a, a group called a Just for Kicks soccer camp. And Mr. Christian actually remembers that camp because his daughter used to go to that soccer camp. And still does. And still does, really, that's good. Um, but I was there for only two years. And Just For Kicks soccer camp is actually a camp, and the only people that can attend are people that have autism and, and people with learning disabilities and people that function differently than others. And it, it was a really good soccer camp. I was there for two years, and I even know the person who's in charge of it. And it was such a great, great camp. And I was able to learn sports a lot better. Uh, but there would be times that even in high school where I would try to be involved in the sport, but I just had to step back because I wasn't comfortable. That happened so much. Even at this stage, too, I sometimes feel that way. With not just sports, but card games. Because there's tons of card games out there now. And there's all that type of thing. Usually, I would just sit back, relax, and just watch. That happens to me too, and not many people are like that. If that makes sense to you. Anybody else? Doesn't okay, look... those are really pretty good questions. Do you have a question? No, okay, the then, okay, then just before I finish. I do have something to say. Like... Yeah, I just one thing. Uh, so I have um, a website which is www.mmcrastle.wix.com forward slash my site. I got speech videos on there as well as I've also been in interviews before that I taped that are on the website. And I also have free business cards that I'm going to get Mr. Christensen to give out if you're interested. And you had something first, feel free to go ahead and say uh, it. My turn. Oh. So I think obviously Matt's message is last slide before the questions was what can you do to increase 
uh, school spirit. But I think you also look at Matt, the guy who graduated three and a half years ago now? Three years. Three years ago. And he doesn't have one. He works at Lowe's. Uh, I guess some days off, and on his days off, he likes to come do these presentations. He loved all his audio visual equipment in the rain to come here to come present. Because I think, I know Matt thinks it's really important that, uh, that his message gets out there. And I think he's an excellent example because not only did he give that, I saw it firsthand in Wellington what he did when I was always critical there, but here's a person who's almost 21 now trying to get back to his community. And I think that, that, that strong message of so Matt said, you might not know what it is now, but at some point along the way, whether it's here at the school, or in the community, or through sports you're involved in, or dance, and those type of things, you'll all find your, your own way to give back. And I think part of Matt's message is how rewarding uh, giving back, because every uh, trust in Matt, like the first day of September, Matt emailed, hey, do you want me to come to that presentation? Because he knows it's important to get that message out there. So for that, I want us to give him a great big Dover Day thank you. Oh, thank you. One thing I know is that I'm all really good at Matt. Matt's a bit of a minor celebrity because when he was in here, he's like setting up at least like 40 people come in. Hey, Matt, hey, Matt, hey, Matt. So you'll see him around town. I know if you're on the Parkway Trail or the ENN Trail and he's riding his bike, watch out because if you're in his way, he's got a real loud whistle that scares people with. Right, Matt? That's true. I do it for security reasons, though. Security reasons. You have to be careful of that. And one, one thing, too, before you close it off. You said it in the last session. I also got a Dover Bay Athletics t-shirt now. I've got last month. So it'll be hard now to cheer for Wellington Wildcats or Dover Dolphins. I don't know. We're slowly winning over. It's going to be a Dolphin here pretty quick, right? Okay. We'll see. So thank you very much.